If you're dealing with insomnia, you're not alone. The pandemic is causing people to sleep differently. One new study finds people are spending more time in bed, but the quality of sleep is much worse. Joining us now with the cause and some tips for all of us is Dr. Sabre Abbott, Assistant Professor of Neurology at Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm sure this is something that's no surprise to you of all people, but how much can we blame insomnia on the pandemic that we're dealing with right now? Well, I think we have the perfect storm. So we've got the stressful situation of the pandemic, and then our way of responding to it is that everybody is suddenly at home. And so you no longer have a separation between work and school and the rest of your life. And so now sleep is just a part of that whole milieu. And it just becomes so much harder to sleep when everything is all mushed together like that. It's such a good point, too, because we've heard so many times to only use your bedroom to sleep, you know. And now some people, that's where they're working out of, too. Um, now, we've all heard the basic tips. Don't be on your computer or phone before you go to bed. But what is it about electronics and that blue light that could keep us up? Yeah, so the problem with blue light close to bedtime is that it actually suppresses your own production of a hormone called melatonin. So this is a hormone that helps promote sleep and helps maintain that time for sleep and that time for wake. So really getting that blue light right before bedtime can be problematic. But the interesting thing is getting blue light during the day, like right now, uh, when it's daytime, getting a lot of sunlight, blue light right now can actually be helpful for sleep. Oh, interesting. During the day, blue light can be helpful. Okay. Um, I, I'm curious, though, some other tips that we always hear besides that are, you know, don't drink caffeine past a certain time and, and uh, in addition to staying off your phone before bed. What are some other things that we can do to get a good night's sleep that you think everybody can practice? Well, so I think one of the most important things, and this is so much easier said than done, is try not to obsess over sleep. I think part of why we have a problem now is that everybody's really focused on being as healthy as they can. They've got a little bit more time available to be in bed because they no longer have that commute to worry about. And so because of that, people are really trying to seek out getting as much sleep as possible. And what happens is that then you end up with a much more fragmented, less consolidated sleep. Mm -hmm. So really trying to keep the same routines that you had before and trying to you know, only stay in bed if you're actually sleepy and able to sleep. Okay, two questions for you since I have you here. Um, so one of the things I've also heard is to keep a regular routine, as you mentioned, but I get up at four o'clock in the morning on the weekdays. I do not want to do that on the weekends. And for people who work overnight shifts, um, what advice do you have for that? Uh, could supplements help or what do you have to say about that? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing, again, consistency is key. Ideally, if you could keep the same schedule every single night, that'd be great. But what best thing to do if you're working overnights or something else that's really out of whack with what you normally would want to do is find some compromise. So don't completely flip back to following the same schedule as everybody else on your days off. Find something that's just, you know, an hour or two off of that that you can still live with and that will work better. Okay, so let's talk about supplements. We hear a lot about melatonin um, or, or magnesium. Are these things that can make a difference and what else could help? Yeah, so melatonin can certainly help. The caution that I would give with that is to try to keep the dose on the lower side. So what you can find over the counter is anywhere from one to 10 milligrams. I would stay at about one milligram just so it gives you that little boost to help you with sleep, but it doesn't hang over the next morning. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of evidence that other things like magnesium can help some people with their sleep, um, chamomile tea, but again, be careful that you're not having too many liquids right before bedtime because that can cause its own set of yes. problems. Okay, so final piece of advice. What do you want the people of Chicagoland to know when it comes to the pandemic and insomnia? Best advice. I think the most important thing, again, is try not to stress too much about your sleep. Your body is designed to sleep. It's going to get the sleep that you need, and don't just try to force it to happen. Okay, don't stress. Okay, thank you so much for joining me this morning. It was a pleasure to talk to you. We could all use your help. Have a great day. You too. Take care.